in the building. Look, it's ladies' night. We are back. LFCW. Five aside. I don't know what five aside is, but ladies' night is back. Season preview with the ones. The only. Oh, the podcaster. James the Brain and Ash Wildy. How do we feel the season's about to begin for our LFC women? James the Brain, I bet you are just buzzing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I can't wait. Oh, the podcaster, you've been in the gym, you've run back, you've not had your lunch, but it doesn't matter, does it? Because if there's <laughs> one thing you can miss your lunch for, it's the ladies' night show. Definitely. One of the one of the, the the marquee shows, like love it. Um, why am I not excited that the the football's coming back? Why is it only James? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, why, so why, 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 why am I not? Oh, are you <laughs> excited that the women's WSL is back full swing? Yes, I am, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. That's a problem, sir. There's loads of people in the building, but before we say hello to everybody, as always, get hyped because we are about to run the Clop Zone intro. Let's get it! Hello, says LFC Women Supporters Club. Joe's in the building. Everybody, get over now. Right now. Not right now, actually. Stay in the show. Stay in the show first. No, Don't get I'm over sorry. yet. And follow LFC Women Supporters Club. James still does that thing. We're not on Instagram anymore. And James is still doing... What's it? What is this all? Why does he do that? I don't get it why he does that. It's like he gets so excited. He just doesn't know what to do with his arms. He's like an octopus, isn't it? He's like an octopus. Oh, um, get on to Instagram, onto Twitter, follow LFC Women Supporters Club, LFC WSC. They are unbelievable. Hello, Rachel. Di- I need to say Dismore, but it's Dinsmore. Rachel <laughs> Dinsmore, how are we doing? Anfield Analytics, all the Liverpool women's stats this season. In the building, Jade, Hearn, Ellis, 38, Cammy in the building as well. Yes. Where's Beardy and Fahi? What on the show right now? I don't know. We need to ring them up. James, he's your mate now, isn't it? <laughs> I knew mate. that was coming. I knew, I knew that phone. was coming. <laughs> um, Joel loves the intro. How are you, says Ellis? We are all good today. On today's show, this is ladies' night slash midday. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're sponsored by Poor Kingdom. So get over. The link is in the description to Poor Kingdom. You can purchase the most amazing children's books, quizzes, all based on sport, lots based around Liverpool as well. Get over there, check them out. But today, we're going through preview of the season. We're talking all things starting 11. We're talking legacy from women's Euros. And guess what else? Guess what else? In fact, it needs one of these because we can't just say guess what else without giving it a... Today, James the Brain exclusive interview with the man himself mr matt beard beardy before we begin though please everyone just listen how scared james was at the beginning (laughs) 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 
<laughs> at the beginning of his interview. I hate you. I actually I'm, hate you. I'm muting him before he interrupts us. So I've muted James, right? So he can't interrupt. Listen how scared he sounds. <laughs> Come on. Listen. Hello. Hi, Matt. It's James. Hello, Matt. You alright? Yes, thanks to you. Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> my James. James, I tell you what, though. The I hate you. I actually hate you. <laughs> the interview wow. was unbelievable. Who said harsh words, James? It was mm. just horrible to me. This interview, <laughs> though, by the way, was unbelievable. James, your first ever interview. I know I take the mic, and it's funny. I would have been scared as well, but Beardy, <laughs> what an opportunity. How did it feel? Did you enjoy the interview with Beardy? Yeah. yeah, it was good fun. It was good fun. Like As you can tell right at the start, I was so nervous because I'd never done it before, but once you once you start talking to him and like you start... Thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I hate you. I hate you. Everyone in the comments, please tell me you love this. Ellis loves this. Oh, Ellis, you women supporters club. Poor James. G. Lo <laughs> oh, James. We're back, though. This is what Ladies <laughs> Night Midday is all about. We will get into that interview later on. But, James, we really appreciate it. Great interview. For all the fans, there's so much juice in there, isn't there? We're going to drop a few snippets today, but the full interview, James, out on Monday, okay. it's definitely one to check out, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. There's quite a few little gems in there that I don't think many people know about. So, yeah, it was it was nice to get a few, a few little nuggets from Matt. Big up, James, says G. Real talk, 100%. <laughs> oh, the podcaster. It's your turn next. Yes, you don't want to do it now because you he's got always oh, gonna be like so professional when he does it next. By the way, we've got content that oh has done before, so that will be dropping soon too. But big, big scoop for James, Matt Beard, great interview. You're excited because I've not even dropped it with the team yet, have I? Or yeah, like we've got a lot of content that we ain't dropped yet. So you know, I just wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm angry right now. But um, yeah, no, and it's a big, big up to to James, who you know, um, who you know, he's part of the team and his knowledge for the ladies um team. You know, he always teaches me something new when we're on shows. He paid me to say that, by the way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really good, man. We got we got a lot of content to come. Like we've just got so much content we're seeing on that. I can't can't wait. I think some of the I think the late the, the the ladies the team actually waiting for us to drop our content like months <laughs> later. They even they for us. So it's funny to see that you know players like oh, we want to see this. Why have we seen this? We yeah. want to see. Yeah. I mean, um, so true there's so much content it's such an exciting season ahead and that's what we want to talk about today we want you to get involved as well in the comments and we're better to start than the signings this season james we splashed the cash this <laughs> we season. Have, we have, we have, oh, we have. We, i don't know if we splashed the cash in, in in transfer fees but we've definitely brought players in so seeing Coe Visto, Flaherty, seeing Cummings coming, Van der Sanden, we've seen quality added to the squad. They've hit the ground running in preseason. Who's impressed you most so far out of those four, James? Uh, Van der Sanden. I think if you watched if you watched the West Ham game um, the other day with her and her and Melissa Lawley have got like such a connection already and like I was watching it at one point they was they were switching wings like most of the game one minute you've got Lawley on the left and then Van der Sanden on the right and then they were constantly switching and you know I think Stengel and Kiernan are going to have an absolute field day during the season with them two on the either side so true <laughs> They were like the red arrows, weren't they? They were like vroom, vroom. It's just, <laughs> that's what we need though WSL um oh Obviously, Lawsy picking up a little bit of an injury in preseason. Cummings coming into the goal. She's been sensational in goal. 
But again, Koi Visto, Euros, top quality right back. Then we've got Flaherty, been there, done that, ex-England, been in the WSL for years. Is this what we were talking about? This kind of experience in quality to come in this season, then next season go for the, the big scoops. Yeah, of course. Um, I was at first. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of like, why are we not going in? Like, probably saw like free signings and stuff like that, and we're letting people go. But since watching the, you know, since watching the the preseason games, I've been like very like I had high expectations anyway. But damn, like they see, they look like they're ready to implement. Like we were saying, no, just stay, stay in the WSL. They look like they they're gonna try and like. I'm not saying they're gonna chat like we finish first second, but they're definitely gonna no. be top half. Like if they continue playing, and and anyone that added is just gonna add so much more quality. It's been it's, it's the right mix so far, and I think it's really I think yeah, really good. And I agree with, with James, who's been the standout as well there so far. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, Joe saying they've all impressed me. Koi Visto going to be one to watch. Bit of a Taylor Hines. I don't know if all agrees with that one. We don't know if all's gonna agree with that one, but. <laughs> Great defender. Hey, you watch also, it. That's strike one. That's strike, one. <laughs> strike, one. strike one. We need to give her a... Strike one. You do not want three strikes because you'll get... And, and for Alex, this is getting a strike as well, by the way. From the building. Great defender, but also great on the attack. Yeah. This is so true. Koi Visto, absolute quality. And it's interesting to see what we're going to do, what we're going to play. Are we going to play 5-3-2, five, 5-2-3? Three, two, five, two, three? Are we going to play 4 it, there's so much fluidity now, James, within this team that we could play any system, really, and still be comfortable. Yeah, definitely. The advantage with Koi Visto as well, I noticed, particularly during the West Ham game, is she can, like Jack said, she can cover a few positions. She She's played right back during pre-season and then she was at left back for the West Ham game. So that gives us a bit more depth either side for the wing backs as well. So... Yeah, I completely agree. We learned you, Joel. We learned <laughs> you, Joel. Don't worry. We learned you. Um, Joel's also saying, I like that Cummings has also mm. had some clean sheets. And this is it. Now, this is the conundrum. And you're going to see that in a minute. We're going to drop our predicted 11s for the season. It's great to have competition. But I want to give a massive shout out. Rehabilitation going so well to Riley Foster. Yeah. Three now. Top quality goalkeepers. Who do you play? Everyone fully fit, James, right? Everybody fully fit mm. at the top of the game. Which keeper do you start? P purely for the experience, I'd, I'd start Lawsy just for the experience. But I think both Riley Foster and Arthur Cummings are going to be excellent, excellent backup goalkeepers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one do you start? I agree with James. <laughs> Get out of here. Somebody needs I to take these sound effects off of him. Top of the game, <laughs> top of the shot. Has to be for me. When they come back, they showed so much promise. Riley Foster. Mm. Woo! Riley Foster in the goal. Unbelievable. But Wait, do you think you should... Put her in straight away. Not straight away. No, 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 not straight away. Oh, we need to ease her in, ease her in, you know. But we'll see what our 11s are. We'll see if we all agree on that soon. But before we get on to our 11s, I want to talk a little bit about the Euros because, wow, it's coming home. It's coming. Football's coming home. What other song goes? Sweet Caroline. <laughs> um, what a competition it has done the world of good for women's football i can't believe how amazing it actually was the potential was there but oh the euros just it's inspired a nation and we're already seeing big big changes aren't we in the women's game yeah, um, I think again, if anything, that helped so much. Like for bringing here, like you're looking at the, yeah, you know I mean, and it, and it also gave the men's England team a bit of a, hey, what's going on? What, what are you gonna do now? <laughs> Over to you. 
and like watching a lot of the interviews before games and the women come to the games and they're they're doing like their interviews and stuff it's just really good to bring so so much more awareness and so much more and i think they've got um a lot more like t uh, games on tv now are scheduled for next season as well so i'm just happy to see it growing it's a growing sport it's still got so much room to for improvement but it's a progression as you keep winning things and showing that you know the women can do it just as well as the men or bring home trophies it's mm -hmm. gonna just grow even more exactly what do you think the main takeaway is james from from the euros like we had sold out stadiums we had amazing football on show a nation came together the family atmosphere back in football again but what's your main takeaway from this euros experience women can be professional footballers and they can do better than the men can. It's as simple as that. <laughs> it's as simple as that, you know. Like you just said, hey, yeah. For the people. <laughs> Let me just pull that back up. Say it again, James. Women, football, women can be professional footballers and they can do it better than the men. You know, we have numerous sold-out stadiums. They you sold wait out for the sound effects first. Like, <laughs> we're meant to be in sync with this, right? <laughs> I'm going to back up what you're saying with the sound effects, okay? So, you can go fire away. Yes, <laughs> we, 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 we saw sold-out stadiums, you know. They sold out Wembley for, for the Euro final. Um, and speaking of the Euro final, can we just can we just take a moment to appreciate Jill Scott re Jill Scott's reaction to that Germany player when she in one of the tackles? Jill <laughs> Scott. By the way, Jill Scott, Helen White, retiring from football what a way to go out james on a high yeah. that's like the dream isn't it like you've built this kind of the foundations you were the first to do it you were the pinnacle of england football for years and years and years and they got this swan song they got the chance to go out on this high that's such an amazing thing for those two players in particular isn't it yeah, def yeah, hundred percent. You know, I think I thought it was a little bit obvious that they were c sort of coming to the end of their England careers because they didn't feature as much, which, which is a nice, a nice thing to have. You know, we're not having to rely on Jill Scott and Ellen White to get England out of predicaments. You know, we've got Ella Toome, we've got Kira Walsh, we've got Alessia Russo, we've got Beth Mead. Like, you know, what more can you want for the future of? the England women's, and we've got the right manager in Serena Weidman. I tell you what, Joel's throwing shade at some men today. She's saying, fellas, better get their aprons and marigolds on and get back in the kitchen. Well, it's been an angel slander that the women have had to put up with four years, and guess what they've done? Throwing it back in your faces. The best thing that could have happened. I'm all for the lionesses. Bun the Lions. We don't no, really like, no, does nothing for me. Lionesses all the way. We've done it. We brought it home and that will never be changed. They were the first to, well, I say first, the first to get the Euros. I suppose the men did get the 1966 World Cup. But we don't care about that. We only care about what the Lionesses did. So let's move on now to a part, James, of your exclusive interview. We're not going to play it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry. I won't embarrass James that much. We are going to pull up the first part, and it relates to what we've just been speaking about, the Euros. Now, James sat down with... Well, he did sit down with... He did sit down. You were sat down when you did yeah, that. sat down. But it was a phone call interview. James spoke to Matt Beard this week, and Matt Beard explained a little bit about what the Euros meant James asked him, did he watch as Matt the fan? Did he watch as Matt the manager? And it was a bit of both, wasn't it? He said he's done his due diligence. Yeah. He's done the WSL due diligence. He's done the Champions League due, due diligence and everything in between. But that's something you can check out on Monday. Make sure the exclusive interview in full on Clock Zone's Twitter and Instagram page. So make sure you check that out. But a piece from that interview was this. So... It's a fantastic tournament, a great advert for football. We've seen an upturn in season ticket sales. That was Beardy on LSCW matches at Anfield and also in ticket sales in general. So, James, I want to talk a little about matches, ticket sales. It's great to see we're going to have more people, especially season tickets. 
That means bums on seats every mm. single game. But there's big matches as well, isn't there, this season at Anfield? How important is it to get people down to Anfield, experience that atmosphere, get behind the girls? You know, it's it's important. It's a it's probably a once for some of the Liverpool women players, it might be a once in a lifetime opportunity to play at Anfield. It's just a shame that that Sky Sports have gone and sort of probably put a damper on things with with the way that they've done the fixtures. You know, you've got the Everton game and you've got the Chelsea game, both quarter to seven kickoffs on a Sunday evening, and I think that's probably why the ticket sales are a little bit down for the for the Merseyside derby. Yeah. And speaking of ticket sales, you just want to show, don't we, James? Let me pop it up for you, because I'll just get this up here. You want to show everybody the ticket sales. So let me just get this up. So this is what it's looking like at the minute. Those orange seats, James, yep. they're the available seats, if I'm correct, yeah? Yeah, so you've got the orange seats in the lower main stand and the lower cop. They're all available, along with the green seats, sort of the bottom left corner and the of the main stand and then the bottom right corner of the cop and then you've got the entire section of the main top section of the main stand the entire Anfield road the inf entire Kenny Dalglish stand and the entire top of cop which aren't available because there's just not enough ticket sales now whether whether I think I think a lot of it is like I said is to do with the fact that it's such a late kickoff on a Sunday evening I think that is going to put an awful lot of people off because we, the three of us, have all been to been to the games at Trenton Park. The the vast majority of fans at the women's games are kids, and unfortunately, they're going to be at school the Monday morning. So I think that's why that's why there's probably not as many ticket sales. Yeah, boo, blue noses, boo, <laughs> boo. They've been allocated 3,600 seats in Lower Anfield. But mm. again, we want you to come. Like We might yeah. boo you, but we want as many people as possible. 3,600, that's amazing. Yeah. That If we could sell those out, plus the ones that are allocated to Liverpool, that's not to say they won't open up more sections of no. the stand. So get across, get buying tickets. James, how much are the tickets for the Derby game? Seven quid for adults, a pound for children. But if you're a, if you're a season ticket holder for the women or for the men, you get complimentary tickets. So you, you can't ask much more than that. Oh, the podcaster, I mean, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Seven quid. Like, even if that's the top-end price, like, get over to Anfield. Experience what Anfield's about. Even if you're not that interested in a WSL, it's a chance to go to Anfield. Feel the atmosphere, be around the ground on a match day. And I'm guaranteeing you, if you watch the game, you'll be so surprised at the standard now. You'll love the quality. You'll love the atmosphere. Like Joe's saying, supporters club members are in the cop. Block 105. Get your tickets because as annoying as Joe's singing is, it's nice when you're at a football game. Oh, I'm joking, Joe. But it's true, yeah, isn't it? To see it and, and to be part of, like, a growing crowd and to be part of it now because if you blink they're gonna be sold out tickets and whatnot i think just to be part of like it the growth and being part of that would be something special it's something you can hold near and dear to you you know what i mean and some people he said can't even get to the anfield in general but you can make these games and let's be honest uh, uh, uh when you order like uber eats or something you're probably paying like five six pounds for um for a service fee and delivery anyway so it's like come on it, it, it's cheap man it's too cheap so cheap, way, way cheap. Jade's going to be there traveling from Ireland. So if you're tuning in and you're from Liverpool, you're from around near the stadium, you've no excuse. No. If Jade can travel from Ireland, you can travel from anywhere in the vicinity of the stadium because Ireland's, Ireland's closer. Than, say if you live in Europe, Ireland's a little bit closer. So, But you can travel France. If you're from France, get to the game. <laughs> Because that's closer. Welsh people, you've no excuse. In fact, Welsh people are probably Welsh closer people. than me, James. <laughs> so you've no excuse. Joel, I apologise. You know I love you. But let's get this off. Let's get back to the show because it's that time where we want to talk about starting 11. So we want to talk about starting 11. So pre-season's been going on. 
It looks like a 5 2 3 is probably in succession again. We did speak about potentially 4 3 3 might be good for the WSL. But Beardy spoke to us about his 11, did it? Well, he spoke to you, James. Sorry, I forgot. You're James's best mate is Howard Beardy. <laughs> He's moving up, though, isn't it? Oh, in the world. Like, who was it last know, year? Right? Jazzy. Can't love Jazzy him no more. Matthews was his best friend last season. <laughs> now it's Beardy. Oh, look, James. Oh, Matt, I love you. I love you, Matt. So, Matt Beard, oh. James's best friend now. He did give a quote about the starting eleven. He said, like, the girls are firing in mm. preseason. The chemistry of the new players with the with the old players, it's just a great vibe, exactly like he wanted, exactly moving forward from last season. But this is one of the quotes that were pulled up from your interview, James, and it was, he's got a pretty good idea about his starting eleven for the opening game of the season. Maybe one or two positions might be up for grabs. So that was Beardy talking about he started starting eleven for the opening game of the season. Which positions do you think you two? I'll ask you both. Do you think are up for grabs? Which are non-negotiable in non-negotiable in your opinion, and which positions might be there for the taking after seeing what you've seen in preseason? I think the the two positions that will be up for grabs, or I think, will be the two the other two centre backs. I think the rest of the team are pretty much nailed on as to who. When who, you say the other two centre backs, who's nailed on for you? He didn't, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't want to be specific there. He tried to dodge the bullet. <laughs> I think I think Farhi's Farhi's like the this certain one, and then it will just be depending on the other two for me whether he starts Robin Matthews or. Robe and Flackerty, or or vice versa. So Robe, please. So Robe's nailed on for you then. No, I said Farhi. I you said, said either. Twi- you said Robe twice. Or... <laughs> I said Robe or Matthews, Matthews or Campbell, Matthews or Flackerty. That's just not what just not, uh, Jeff, that's not what I heard. I have Robe twice. <laughs> uh, I heard Robe twice. <laughs> <and then> you... <laughs> oh, which of the non-negotiables? Who's nailed on a position? Do you think who could get a position? I agree with James, but I think I didn't think. And if she sees this, she's gonna she can cast. Uh, I didn't think Rogue. I, th- I didn't know if Rogue was going to. I thought she'd have been more of a rotational player. But watching that game, she's, she's she's probably the next one, so it'll be the rotation of the third centre back. No, I completely agree. But let's get into our starting 11s that we chose. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yesterday. Like, is one. it just me or does that sound like the Mr. Bean intro? You know, the Mr. Bean animation. Does anyone, <laughs> right, does. Is there anyone <laughs> you can think of, like, in the world, James the Brain, that reminds you of, like, Mr. Bean or would suit this introduction? James, James, stop it. Stop it now, James. I was like, what are these two on about? What are they I'm working with Dumb and Dumb. Like, what is going on? But this is time for starting 11. Let's see what Joe said. What about Raza 2? Defender or get her out on the wing. That's an interesting shout, isn't it, James? Like, Raza, loyal, always performs to the top level. I think we forget, maybe because of her age, but then you look at Fahey's age, we forget mm. that Raza does a great job within that team. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think that's the that's the advantage with having Koi Visto. You know, if, if he wants to play both of them, he could obviously switch uh, Koi Visto and Roberts and then Koi Visto and Hines, depending on who we're playing and whoa 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 slow slow what? down there yeah. <laughs> always like you do not <laughs> take hands <laughs> out of her favorite position but let's look now let's take a look at our starting 11s and oh best friends oh james and matt an interview with beardy <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
two new best friends, though. They love making the same decisions. They can't think for themselves. It's all on James the Brain. <laughs> Can I just say he he copied me for clapping or anything for us? This <laughs> people like you. Oh, sorry. You want a you want a celebration for your yeah, um, I mean, there yeah. you go. <laughs> There we go. Celebration. So, starting 11, this is what O and James would go for. Lawsley in goal, right back Kuvisto, Robe, Fahey and Matthews, Hines at left back. Then Holland and Kearns in midfield, Lawley, Van der Sanden on the wings with the one, the only, the flying Irish woman up top, Leanne Kiernan. Do you want to talk about your teams, or do you want me to pull up my team? We'll go with we'll go with yours, and then we'll, we'll discuss some and see if there's any similarities. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is the team that should start 100 percent because my footballing knowledge is just it's just Far out of this world there. compared to you two. Really? So let's take a look at at this one. Let's just have Maya one more time. James and his best friend. Oh, friends, friends. <laughs> Here we go. Just... This is my starting eleven. Cummings. In goal, get Ertha in there. Kuvisto at right back. Rob Matthews, Campbell, no brainer in the centre back positions. Taylor Hines on the left, and you know what? I didn't want to, but I had to agree with you guys. That front five, I feel like that's more or less a given. Now maybe Fernie could maybe get in there. I, I think Stengel's probably going to come off the bench. Well, let's talk about it. I want to see what people in the comments are saying as well. Give us your 11s. We'll pin them up. But, James, explain why you've... In, in fact, I've had enough of you for a little minute. Oh, explain <laughs> why you've gone with the likes of Fahi. In, I, know she's, I know it sounds ridiculous. James says she's guaranteed. I don't think she is. Why, do why, you why don't you think she is, though? I just don't think, and hey. yes, she's played at this level before, but her career's going on now, 34, I think 34, 35 years of age, and I know age is just a number, but I think the pace of the WSL is just too much. I think when you look at what the other centre-backs have, they've got what far he's got, Apart from the leadership, and I get that. I'll give it a little bit. He's got, but they've also got the pace as well. Yeah. So, Fuck. I'd, in fact, looking at my team, I would be willing in that team for Robe to potentially swap with Raza as well. So, that's an option. But I think we're going to have to think of a time now where we look at life after Fahi. She's dragged us through a lot. We're going to have to start I looking at that. How would you go with it all? I definitely agree, but I think playing in a back five, um, you can you have the two protection of two, two two on your left or not, and she's very very sensible into where to position herself. I don't think she'll start every game, but I think she is the given for like you know tried and trusted. I'm gonna go for that, get the experience, yeah. and then start like you know this is probably the last thing you start seeing transition her out of um you know and trusting a bit of the other guys. But you need someone like her in the back line, or otherwise it's just. You know mm. that that type of experience and that type of leadership you need at the back. Like you see it with some with other teams. You know they. But that's why you can you can afford to do that in a back five. I think who's playing a back yeah. four? I wouldn't put her in. But playing in a back five, yeah. You can you know in the central of the back five as well. That's a great good. point. And like I said, I think Fahi will play. I think she will. That mm. would just be my team. I think that she does offer leadership. But James, why are you going with Fahi in the? Who else did you have next to Fahey? Matthews. I think we agreed on Matthews and Robe, but I went yeah. with Campbell. Yeah. Campbell with Fahey. I, th I think with Fahey, it's probably mainly the leadership. You know, it, w there will be games probably mainly probably against Chelsea where she might not play. He'll probably go with one of the other because obviously with Sam Kerr being as as pacey as she she is, I think I think that will be the sort of game where. Matthews, Campbell, Robe will all come into their own because they're they're slightly quicker than Fahi. And obviously we've seen what Sam Kerr can do. Yeah, so true. And again, the supporters club saying a pace coming up against some of those strikers. Mm. 
probably start some and then be rotated. That's probably what will yeah. happen this season because, again, she's not going to be able to start every single game of the season. What I'm saying, although, about having Campbell in that team, we've shown preseason we can probably mix it with the good sides in the WSL. But when it comes to Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, Man United, they're probably, if we're honest, a step above what we're at at the minute. This is a game, for me, that is perfect for Campbell. Because what she does, she's got a great range of passing. Like, her long balls are unbelievable. Set pieces, so strong. And again, she's not just a throwing merchant because she's so good on the pitch. But that long throw against the top teams, that's another weapon. Play on the defensive and hope you get a throw in. Throw some people in the box and something might happen. That's why she starts for me now every game because she's got so many weapons. A left foot and a throw in are just crucial. So when would you pay? When would you play Fahi then? When? When? when what? When would you? Would you like for me? I would rotate her in those games. Like for those teams. I think Campbell, Campbell and Matthews are a non-negotiable for me. And then I think you're rotating Rob, Fahi, and Raza. I'd re- I'd rotate and those Flaherty. three. I think yeah, and Flaherty. Sorry, yeah, Flaherty yeah. as well. I think Flatter Fla- Flaherty comes in. Flakatak. Flakatak. I think um, I'll call it Jilly. Jilly. I think Jilly comes in for that experience as well. Yeah. Where Fahi gives that experience, Flaherty knows against these top, top teams, how to operate. She's mm-hmm. been in there before, so I think she might play against a higher level of opposition. Um, well, isn't more it good, though? Because like, when we started the season, we were saying who should play, who we think might leave or whatever. We was, at the back, we was very much like, mm, I'm not too sure um, at the end of the season. But going into the season... And watching them play and being like, ah, it could be, we could rotate, you know, we can actually start looking at life after fight and whatnot. It's like, that's a, that's a really good, like, this is, I always see this as positive because it, we're, what we're saying is we lose our captain, our leader, and the levels don't drop. So mm-hmm. I, I see this as a positive. And any one of them, if, if I, it would be transitioning to fight, I think, I think she's still got it, but I would rotate her in those type of games. And we've got rot- like for like type rotation. So yeah. I see it as a positive, but I definitely understand where you're coming from. Don't forget, Jazzy Matthews, great yeah. captain as well. That's... She showed when far he was injured last season. Really good captain. Yeah. Did you That's want to say the... something, James? That's the other advantage with having the with the defensive line that we've got. You know, we've got Taylor Hines and Meg Campbell and Emma Coy Visto that can all play on the left hand side. Raza can play right hand side with Coy Visto. Raza can play at centre back. So we've got we've got a very good defensive option. You know, yeah, like when depth. when I was speaking to Matt. Earlier in the week, he said, oh, that... <laughs> "I knew you were going to do." <laughs> he he was saying that you know during during preseason, that's been a lot of things that they've been working on. He said when when they were in the championship last season, they could afford they could afford to maybe go a goal down because they were they were such a strong team in the championship. Whereas in the WSL, if you go if you concede one goal, you can't you can't afford it as as much in the WSL because obviously the way that the, the the league is so strong and I think that's going to be the key part. I think that is going to be the key part. Another one was another good point from from Joe. Is Keenan better on the wing? Running into space to score and Stengel up front. I think, right, that Stengel is made for the WSL. I think she's a WSL style player. But the hard part for me is Look at the West Ham game. Keenan up front is just lethal. You're guaranteed goals. And you can see the link up now, especially with Holland. By the way, Holland is playing unbelievable in Mm preseason. She looks like this dynamic box-to-box, no-nonsense, like a two-job midfielder. She can do two jobs in that midfield, Mm -hmm. which allows then your Missy Bowles your Carla Humphreys, your Fernies to kind of add a bit of flavour and a bit of spice to it. She's been sensational. But, oh, would you be playing Stengel? I know your, your team is Van der, Van der Sanden and Lawley, but 
would you some games maybe play Keenan on the wing, or do you think it's Keenan Stengel rotation? Um, yeah, Keenan starts for me. Pace. One thing about WSL is not like championship pace is everything, and I feel mm. like Keenan is doing her thing, and I think that front three is electric in terms of like pace and and whatnot. I think Stengel is somebody who, when you want to change it up off the bench, she'll change, add another dynamic. But I would always go for the pace because pace. If you watch any of the top teams, it's pace. It's always the wingers or the forward that gets in behind and then, you know, and whatnot. So I would definitely play them front three. I wouldn't play her out wide unless it was like someone was injured or we had to make a rotation. And then Stengel knows how to score goals. She knows how to play. We can change the way we play. It's like, you know, when you play it, you're playing and you want to add something different. You want to bring something different. Where if, you, if you're yeah. losing or if you want to get a goal, if you want to hold, she'll hold the balls. You know, she'll a get target, goals, she'll a around. target woman. Yeah. Like, so she, she, play long ball. she will start some games. But I feel like when you're playing specific teams, when you're when you're starting your strongest team and how you want to play, this is how I'd, I'd prefer to play. Well, true. Yeah. LFC I mean, the way monsters. You, the way... James, don't start. James, do not start. <laughs> do not start. Um, LFC monsters saying far he's like a Thiago Silva. Excellent reading of the game, ball playing ability, make up for the lack of pace. This is why I was thinking, maybe in some games, do we go? With a three in midfield and a two up front with Stengel and Keenan, and then we have Fahi in the sixth role. We've seen it in the WS uh, in the championship. We saw Fahi playing mm-hmm. six at a large point, especially under Amber Whiteley later on, towards the back end of that season when we went on a run. Do you think that's something that Fahi maybe could do, James? Come in and play as a six. Yeah, potentially. You know, we we know what she's capable of defensively, and she is a very, very good reader of the ball. She's very vocal. Um, but I think the other thing with like with Stengel and Kin, and the other thing that he, he could possibly do is put Stengel at, at Cam, and then have Van der Sanden and Lawley one side, and have Cap Stengel in Cap at Cam, and then Kin and as centre forward because we we saw a lot last season that Stengel's hold up play is so so good and she gives she gives the wingers to, more to, that little bit more time to run off of her um so i think that could be an option as well you've muted yourself ash my bad people <laughs> my bad We've got James. I thought you'd um, trick me then. I thought you'd. Do. You know, James has control of the show. So James could have done that then. He could have tricked me then. Um, we've got Jade saying, hopefully, Kieran will be scoring next week for Ireland. James, there's been so many call ups, hasn't that, for the women's team? There's been a lot of call ups. We've got England under 23s. Yep. We've got Ireland. We've got Wales. So many call ups for yep. so many players. Is this what we're going to see more and more, do you think? Do you think there might be some big call-ups this season if Missy Bowe is playing week in, week out? If Taylor Hines is playing week in, week out? Could we see some England call-ups within this squad for those two players? I'd, I'd like to think so, but I think I think it would probably take maybe a, a, a another maybe season or two, I think, for... for <laughs> Missy Bow and Taylor Hines to get themselves adapted back to the WSL maybe before we'll we'll see them get into that England squad because that England squad is so strong. Yeah, it is so strong, a really strong squad. Let's then move on a little bit from this because we've got some more beardy quotes. So I want a beardy quote for you because James <laughs> the Brain has worked so hard, bless his little cotton socks, winning it to pull up. Another beardy quote. So, the final quote of the show, like we said, exclusive interview with Matt Beard out on Monday. Look, it's there. Friends, it's there. Exclusive. <laughs> An interview with Beardy out Monday. But transfers. This was the big one for me, James. I'm happy with the squad. We probably would like one more. Mm. So this was Beardy on the transfer business the club have done. And he did go on to say, if it's not available, we're not going to push it. We could wait until January. But they are looking for an extra player. Yeah. Who do you think or what type of player, what profile of player 
do you think we could potentially be missing and may need just to add a bit more depth within this squad going into this season? Um, I think I think the only potential place would be maybe midfield just to give it a little bit more depth. You know, we've got we've got Missy Bocans, we've got Carla Humphrey, we've got Kerry Holland, we've got Rachel Finesse. We could probably do with a maybe one more in that midfield. Yeah, so true. And like we said, Beady was holding his cards close to his chest. We didn't get He's which not just gonna buy was. for the sake of buying. He's, but that's, what... that's it. We don't just buy for the sake of buying. Oh, do you agree with James? Where would you want to look for a little bit more depth and quality within the squad? I would agree. I think if, we say, Holland gets injured, who's doing her job? Who is doing her job? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we agree. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> I mean, any, all the, the four midfielders that we've got, I think, will all do a solid job in the WSL during during like the season. But it's it's finding somebody that if we've got a team that are, that are difficult to break down, it's finding somebody that can can like either start the game or come off the bench and just have that yeah. bit See, more. I'm looking at the other way I think to protect that midfield to allow you know our players the rest of the players are kind of a bit more attacking minded and want to do that role i think that other, other than holding we don't really have somebody that's going to sit down protect them kind of do both jobs do the mm. you know the tackling and whatnot i think the last person we compared was jay wasn't it jay yeah, bailey well, yeah yeah jay bailey it was oh sorry it's because i said jade sorry i didn't say <laughs> jade <laughs> jade Fred. Yeah, oh, Fred. Fred. I probably would have somebody to do that role. So, and Holland's not going to play every game. She, like, you physically can't play every game. At some point, you're going to need to be rested. So, if we bring in one kind of defensive-minded, box-to-box -to -box type of midfielder that doesn't mind to do that that type of job, then I feel, I feel, I feel like we're okay. Because the the girls impressed me at a level. Like, I, I was not surprised because I had high expectations. But I was thinking, you know, WSL, but over preseason, if they play like that, they are competing. Yeah, so so true. Tomorrow will be the true test for them. You know, they've got Manchester City tomorrow. And going back to that interview, Matt Beard said that they they started off with like the lights of Nottingham Forest and Blackburn to give the girls time with the ball, whereas now the last like sort of few few preseason games will be about the, the bigger tests that they're gonna face and like breaking teams down. And being patient with not yeah. having the patience. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, That's it. Everyone. And not, not trying to force things that aren't It's going to because... be difficult, isn't it? Because we were used to dominating possession last season. Yeah. We were used to being the team that everybody was fearing. We could express ourselves. We're going to have to go the complete opposite this season and maybe balance it out because we've shown we can handle it in pre-season. Mm. We've shown with the results that we can roll with the big boys, you know what I mean? So, or the big girls, we can roll with them. So, I think it's going to be an interesting one to see where we, we come this season. I'm really interested for it, but that's a roundup. What I want to do is, before we go, everyone, you need to, if you're not, be following LFCWSC, the supporters club, because you get all the information. Joe and her colleagues over there are doing a great job so make sure you are following Liverpool Women Supporters Club on all socials. Joe's going to be joining us on some shows some weeks. So make sure. Hands up. It's like school. Yes. <laughs> and I want to just say that sign up to, to them as well because I got some real good information. I, I, I got it twice. but <laughs> <laughs> You get but doubles. Um, yeah. Do you know what, though? That's true. Sign up because they've got a new newsletter. So make sure you sign up because you get the newsletter on a weekly basis. And Joe had to drop this in there. I wasn't at West Ham, so I missed that. I was singing Cheeky Plug. Now, Joe, put it in there because I know what it is, but it's called. I forgot what it's called. Is it? I can't remember what it's called. I don't want to say it in case it's completely wrong. And I, I give other things away. So, Joe, in the comments, put it there. But Joe basically has the voice of an angel. Yeah, yeah, baby. 
I'm not so sure what? about that. But... All right, guys, I got to tune off. I don't know what well, that was. It sounded all right, but I don't know what that is. I'm just going to nice see if I don't see you through a window. I see you through a window. I <laughs> see you through a window. I see you through a window. Unbelievable voice has been approached to feature. I don't know if I can give this away, actually, but she, she said cheeky plug, isn't it? So that means, like, I can give a cheeky plug. In fact, I need confirmation. I don't want yeah, to don't, it don't. No, send, send it in if we can, and we'll tell everybody what's going on. Um, is women's football good? Wow. Okay. Let's do this then. Oh, is women's football good? Because we're trying to get someone into this right now. This is reports at Anfield on the gram. They want to know. Yeah, it's um the level of football is, is high intensity. I've been to we've been to a couple of games and and literally so impressive. Like we and we got really close. We got pitch basically pitch size, isn't it? So we felt like Beardy and his team. So no, <laughs> women's football is, is definitely there. And if, if you all to tried to get on the bench, all was like just go across, go on, just go in front of them. They're like yeah, all it's, was it's, literally it's, trying it's, to sit on the bench. The game. Game. <laughs> I know James. No, but if, 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 if you really want to look at anything, just look at England's run of you know the World Cup. Look at what they sorry. Look at the England of their run. So we look at the women's team and how they won it, how they played defensively, goalkeeper, everything. They they bossed that whole run. So just look at just look at it that way, and that will tell you if women for how far if women's football is and how good it is. It's amazing. You know what I've got to do? We give honesty here, right? On Klopp zone, we give honesty, right? And I think you'll both agree with me. The women's game is not the level of the men's game. It's not. Because we're not there yet. We've just turned professional. So think of the men's game when they just turned professional. It's a big change in culture. It's a big change in everything because the women now have to adapt to living a normal life, going, working, normal jobs, and then training in the evenings to now dedicating their life to football. So this is why we're seeing it grow so quickly because they've got the opportunity now to be a footballer full time. Mm. Now, what I will say is the competitiveness, the the level of performance is so good. Like teams are on an even even playing field, especially WSL. It's just so competitive. You've probably seen the matches where England play Macedonia and beat them twenty something nil. That's not reflective of the women's no. game. It is in international football, but I feel with the club game now. We're seeing so many evenly balanced games and the quality is improving week in, week out. So definitely get over, tune in, because you will love... I like my answer better, just saying. Even if, even if you sit and watch it on Sky Sports, you know, the Sky Sports have got the WSL games virtually the whole season. So even if you can't get to your local team, sit and watch it and you'll see like the level that that we're talking about, you know, the the women, the WSL is going to be in FIFA 23, for God's sake. That's like, that shows something. That's big, isn't it? That is big. Yeah. Like, as I much still as... prefer my answer. <laughs> should, I, should I bounce him? I'll bounce him out of here if you want me to, James. Well, thank you can try. I'm, I'm you know, 33.3% of this, of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what else, though? Another thing um, that I've forgotten now because I was just said that. Another thing I would say about what was I gonna say? You've 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 thrown me off. Why have you done this to me? See what I mean? This is professional show, and then you come in here and do that. While I'm thinking of what I was gonna say, we'll we'll do this because Joe is letting us release some more exclusive content on the show. Thank you so much. Some more exclusives. Um, I'm singing in a project called Gods of the Game. A brand new football. Opera. A brand new football opera. It's on Your soon. Ash was an annoying teacher, in it. You didn't know it. Is. Oh, <laughs> shut up, mister. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's on in Surrey. The 19th of October, a documentary about it will be on Sky Arts. Listen, Joey's famous. I'm telling you now, people. <laughs> James. Get off my buttons right now, <laughs> James. I'd give you access purely for quiz purposes. These <laughs> buttons are precious to me. 
The sound effects are mine. Don't make me play this again. Don't make me. Oh, oh, yeah. Hi, Matt. It's James. Hello, Matt. You alright? Yes, thanks to you. Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, what for doing this, I really appreciate it. Oh, James, that's what you get. That's oh. what you get for touching those <laughs> buttons that don't belong to you. Um, <laughs> yes, it's on Sky Arts because I'm telling you now, Joe has the voice of an angel. So show support. We'll be seeing Joe and finding out when that's on Sky Arts, and we'll let you all know. But Amazing business. I'll do the cheer from now on. Thank you, James. Amazing. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, let's move on then to the last part of the show. The show that the show, the part of the show that everybody has been waiting for. James the Brain. It is. Do we need we need we need like a jingle for James's quiz, isn't it? <laughs> jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle. <laughs> jingle bell, right? Jingle bell, swing, yeah, jingle bell. Um, no, we'll not do that one. I'm sorry, people. Do you know what? Let's get this one up in the building here. We've got Mr. Bean. Do we do the Mr. Bean again? No, we play this one. <laughs> it's James the Brains. Big LFCW quiz. Disclaimer, I apologise in advance for his horrendous questions. <laughs> and it's live next. And we're live. <laughs> James the Brain, it's that time of the show where you show us your completely awful quiz that nobody cares about, but we do it anyway. Wow. So, James, <laughs> James, we're joking. Honestly, this is actually my favorite part <laughs> of any show. I don't know why. I just love quizzes. Oh, you actually love quizzes, don't you? You two are so competitive. We are a bit competitive. <laughs> we are a bit com James the Bean, apparently. James the Bean, Mr. Bean. James is only waving and not feeling bad about that because he knows exactly what I was on about before. That's why he's buying into it. Um, oh, we'll share our secret with you later. Joe, it's fine. It's fine. If you share with me, then you want to run a show for an hour and not share, bring me in on a joke, then I don't need it. Oh, I'm sorry, well. James' best friend. Oh, baby, we love you. Ooh. Right, James the Brain. Let's get firing with this quiz right. and taking all down. Do we need like... um? Do we need a like official tally so we know who's like in the lead? Should we do a counter? Yeah, if you want. Oh my, James, can you sound a bit more interesting? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna do it, but I didn't know how to do it. To be fair, so this, is your, all... this is James. You shouldn't be excited, right? <laughs> James, the brain. Explain to everyone what your quiz is. What are the rules? Can they get involved? Oh, we cannot look in the comments, but we will let James look in the comments. Okay. People so we'll get put it over in the, to the private chat so that's all we can see. James, you can look at the comments because you can pin them up after the yep. question's done to see who has got questions right. But yep. all we won't look, we'll um we'll do it the right way because we're honest, we're, we're, we're good sportsmen. So James, let us know what it is. It's just a general LFCW quiz. There's only about four questions. Um, oh my gosh, changing with Joe, get Joe back. It's just the, <laughs> Joe, the, come on, mate, let's go. <laughs> right, come on in, question one. Wait, oh. wait, oh, I've not got the God. score up yet. How oh, can you do God. this, James? You're so unprofessional. Why do you need the score, though? Because <laughs> Ash, Ash can't count past two. <laughs> oh, you little <laughs> bad, cheeky bugger. Yo, check a little bagger. Here we go. Right, are we ready? We are Question... so ready, James. Question one, spot the ball. There's no ball. There's loads in the background, James. Loads. <laughs> no, where where is the ball in the picture? 
Look at him with his little grid and everything. He's proper talking <laughs> no, serious. No, but really, he thinks this is, you know what, this annoys me. This is when you're trying to pay for something or go into something. It's like, spot the chimney. Spot the... Why, James? Why? Because you Wait, there's so many balls, though, I, so... Is you lot moan at me when I do the, like, the questions. You go, oh, they're too impossible. So no, I've got change it up a so bit. Am I doing all the balls or just... No, just the one. But there's more than one ball in there. So there's a has there been a ball taken out? Yes, there is a ball missing that you've got to work right, out. Right. So with. James, you're telling the people now you're missing a ball. Yeah, there's a ball missing, basically. <laughs> you, you've got to work out where it is. James is missing a ball. Oh, uh, you're right. So immature. <laughs> uh, I'm going with A2. So people can see. Let me just get that off just so they can see. I'm going with A2. Maybe I'm playing this game wrong, but I'm going to go... Because that's what I was going to... I'm just going to go for the ball all the way in the back because that's away from the rest of them. So I'm going to say B4. You're going to say B4? Because there's a ball okay, in the sorry. back. Okay. That's not with the others. Right. So these are... A1... B B two have balls in it. Yeah, so these are some of the some of the like answers. Got reports Anfield on the ground C one, LFC monsters A one. Joe said A two. The correct the correct answer was A one. So it would have been in the bottom left corner. Some good photoshopping, though, James. Who's done that? Huh? I mean, what do you mean? What are you so confused at, O? Go back. So the original, that's the one, and it, it's on the... Okay! All right, now I know what you're doing. I hate you now. So I'm finding with... Okay, okay, okay. Oh, you... Why do you do this on everything? Because <laughs> you guys obviously don't explain stuff properly. I what did you do? The, you did this the other day. I do it every every game. <laughs> But it's, it's because I, it's, it's because you put a picture in front of me and you expect me to still listen. I can't multitask. <laughs> to explain the game and then put the picture up. Oh Jesus! I apologize, God. people, for the for the staff that we have. I really. Apologize. And you say you got me from the 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 podcast supply yeah, agency. You know Supply agency specials in the building today. <laughs> right, right, next question. It's nil nil still. Right. So, Liverpool against Sunderland earlier last season, there are four four players missing. Can you name the four? Who's first? Oh, let me zoom in because I know I'm blind. <laughs> um, ooh. Oh. I think I know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I zoomed too far in. Nice, now my, my, my laptop's moving slow. <laughs> Want me to go, James? Yeah, go on then. I think it's... Where, what what's, What point in the season was this? Uh, Towards the end of the season, I think the game was. It's It's got to be Lawley then. Lawley left. Holland, central midfield. Oh... Raza right back and oh, I don't Wait, Robe was did, injured. Did. Robe was injured. No, Robe's Robe. there, Robe's there. I don't know. Oh Robe's there, sorry. Robe's yeah, Robe's there, you blind there. man. Oh. Which did Charlotte play? Campbell and Raza. So you're going one second, so you're going Lawley. L Lawley, Holland. Holland. Yeah, definitely Lawley and Holland. I agree there. Campbell and, and Raza. Campbell and Raza. Okay. Do oh. I have to tell you which positions those two are in or? No, you're good. So no. I agree, but I changed the last two. Did Shot didn't shot I changed the right back for didn't shot so you're say. you're saying Lawley Holland Holland Campbell, Campbell. And then Charlotte Wardlaw. Yeah, wait, she didn't play the back end, didn't it? Ah, right, go on, but forget, go on. That's, yeah. that's the home girl, let's go. So the correct answers were Yana Daniels, 
Kerry Holland, Raza Roberts, and Charlotte Wardlaw. So we've got the same. So, so you've got. Two. Yeah. So you. I was going to say Yana, you know, but I thought if it's the beginning of the season, yeah. I'm sure I thought Lolly started most games towards the back end. Yeah, so you got to, it's two all. Okay, I'll accept that. I'll take that. <laughs> Whose like comments you. are we putting up? Are you putting anyone's? Did oh, anyone one, give answers for that one? One second. Uh... Do you want me to be in charge of that bit? No, no. We got Mel Lawley, Kerry Holland, Meg Campbell, and Charlotte Wardlaw. So. Which, again, it wasn't wasn't yeah. far out. So, I was trying to find trying to find teams that w it wasn't obvious. So, I was right. Uh, no, you did well, dear, because we all thought. Right, word scramble. Easy, this. Can I go first? Go on then. Okay. In fact, I say easy. It might not be. <laughs> um, Riley Foster. Yes. Um. Taylor Hines, Leanne Keenan, yes, yes. Um, Hannah Silcock, Eartha Cummings, um, Melissa Lawley, Jasmine yeah. Matthews, and Carla Humphrey. Yeah. I'm so intellectual. Like, no, I you're right. So I really, I, no, no, you're right. You're right. Dude. I'm trying to think. I'm just yeah. a scramble king. That's, no, I'm you're like, right. Got, you're right. I've got this, like, <laughs> oh, yes. Get off my button. <laughs> no, I agree. You know what's funny, though? You're definitely right, bro. Nice. Yeah. As soon as you said, I was like, yes, yes. I was right. trying to do it so that it wasn't as difficult, but there you go. So you got Riley Foster, Taylor Hines, Leanne Keen, and Hannah Silcock, Arthur Cummings, Melissa Lawley, Jasmine Matthews, and Carla Humphrey. What do we do in terms of points, though, now, James the Brain? Just do it three all, and then this last question can be can be the decider. I'm disgusted in this. Disgusted. I got in there so super quick. Give all the correct answers for them. All I did was go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. No, but, no, but come on, wait, 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 wait. In all fairness, when you named the players, I said, yes, I agree, I agree, but I disagree with the right back. I disagree with this one. So I say, <laughs> when I agree, if I agree with you, it's because I genuinely feel like it. <laughs> did I do that to the last one with, 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 the, with the center back? I changed the center back and the right okay, back. Okay, okay, I'll let you yeah. off. Okay. No, I can use most of the time anyway. So I think these are the two that you're going to hate me for. So no, wait, we've got to do this properly, James. Going into the last question, we've got to do it right. Here we go. The decider. Right. Now you can do it. Matthews, no? No, he's Coy Visto, that. So, all was wrong on that one. And are these X players? Wait, these are yeah, not, these not the same. Yeah, I would say that's not the same jacket. I just Liverpool saw players. These aren't current, in, current well, Liverpool not players. players. They're not they don't playing play well. for Liverpool I started, anymore. I started my Liverpool journey late, so I've definitely lost this one. I'll give you a clue. That's, that's Lucy I'll Bronze. Give, I'll give you a clue. They're both current England Lionesses. That's Lucy Bronze. I just said that one. And that is that one is <laughs> difficult. That's what that one is. Come on, you, you should get that. You know, Max, if you get one right, then no, I it's Beth English. Beth English. The oh, I'd, I'd be lying if I said anything. <laughs> Right, the correct answers were Beth England and Lucy Bronze. Come on, man! He's taking it at the last minute, ladies and gentlemen! He's so competitive. <laughs> Let me just get the score up, just so all can bask in the ambiance so of greatness. Let me just put the score up for everybody to oh, see. Get over yourself, Jimmy. So yeah, competitive. Uh, ah, <laughs> so competitive. Five three final score. James, before you put another picture on, you need to tell me when we're changing over so I can sort the branding go. Oh, Come on. Sorry. God. Get with yourself. Come <laughs> on. 
So I'll, I'll take that one. A nice <laughs> early victory. That's 1-0 in Season 2 of James the Brain's Big Fat Useless Quizzes. There we go. <laughs> Big Fat Horrendous Quizzes. Do you know what? I have loved every second of being back for Ladies' Night, Ladies' Midday. It's been fantastic. Everybody in the comments, you've been unbelievable. Well done, Ash. Come on, did you ever do it? Me? <laughs> you really you self -praise, you praise, like not self praise, but put your like, come on, man, you could have kept that one side. In this <laughs> <laughs> world. Um, James, sort oh. yourself out in it. That's oh, all well, I am very, I am very sorry, Joe. I'll let you do the quiz next time, then. Yes, Joe, 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 yes, you can. <laughs> but everybody, on a serious note. The women back in action so soon in the WSL. We are back. Ladies night bringing you all the exclusives. Not to mention James and his best mate. Exclusive interview Ooh. dropping on Monday. Monday. And for one last time, before we leave, you all want to hear the introduction, don't you? I've muted James, so he can't say anything. So don't worry. Listen to James. I actually Ray. hate you. <laughs> His exclusive interview with Mr. D. Hello. Hi, Matt. It's James. Hello, Matt. You all right? Yes, thanks. to you? Yeah, good. Thank you. <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yes, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but more importantly than anything, we need to thank our sponsors. <laughs> like I was just pointed out, Poor Kingdom, the best children's books in the game. For sport, we love that. And Joel, updating our membership form today. So please get involved with it. We can't wait for the WSL. We can't wait for the interview. Everybody, this has been Ladies Night slash Midday. We're back in the building. Let's go. But like always, we end the show by saying you'll never mm -hmm. walk alone. Keep an eye out on Klopp Zone for for the Liverpool women's team and score tomorrow. James, did you feel? Do you know you felt the hype that I was going into the to say goodbye. Yes, yes, I did. And then you, <laughs> as always, Liverpool fans, we love you. You'll never walk alone. Always oh, been a pleasure, James. It's been a pleasure. But until next time, peace. peace.